Yo guys, Punk around another video. So it's been a good minute now, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are getting settled into Classic by now. You've pushed through and are inching your way closer and closer to Endgame each day. Even with that, the push to level 60 isn't exactly the only levels that you're going to be grinding. You also have professions to skill up alongside that. One thing that keeps popping up in my mind are different recipes across the world that are available for basic purchase at vendors around Azeroth. So that's the topic of this video. Let's go over some of the more interesting recipes across all professions that you can get access to right now. Keep in mind that I'm going to focus only on recipes that are immediately attainable without a prerequisite grind. So no reputation grind required for any of these recipes. Although some are limited in stock and very hard to attain because the vendor might actually be camped all day, but still theoretically available right now. Without further ado friends, here's 15 awesome vendor recipes in Classic WoW. Let's get into it. So this one is arguably one of the most awesome ones on this list due to the way that you gain access to the actual vendor itself. So the recipe teaches you how to make major mana potions, which are the strongest mana potions available in Classic WoW. Mana potions are integral to the Classic experience. Every mana user is constantly chugging these in order to sustain through long fights. Less so in Molten Core and some of the earlier patches where most bosses die pretty much in no time. Once you get to the later raid tiers, mana potions are basically a necessity. I'm sure you've noticed that mana is scarce. You probably spend more time drinking during your leveling process than most other activities. So this one isn't as simple as just running to a vendor and picking up the recipe. The vendor itself is actually dead. Well, he's a ghost. So you can't exactly see him in the mortal realm. He's located at Caer Darrow, which is a little island in Western Plagueland, so right where Skolomance is. So if you want to gain access to this vendor, you need to actually see the dead or see the ghosts, which requires an item. It's called a Spectral Essence, and surprisingly enough, the Eye of Divinity, which is the priest quest item for Benediction or Anathema, also produces the same effect. Once you equip it, you can actually see ghosts and gain access to this vendor. In order to get the Spectral Essence, you have to complete this little quest series within Skolomance. It's only three quests long, and it does actually lead to some nice pre-raid items. The sword specifically is the best pre-raid tanking sword for humans, and it's actually really good as an offhand as well. So just complete this quest line, get the essence, and then you unlock access to the vendor, and now you can get the best mana potions in the game, or at least you can create them. This one is attainable at low levels, and most people don't think much of it off first glance, but it's actually quite decent, and in some cases it's extremely useful. The recipe is for frost oil, which is actually an alchemy recipe used to create an oil which can be applied to your melee weapon. So similar to wizard oil, but for melee hits. It has a chance to proc on your strike, sending a frost bolt to your enemy, slowing them in the process. It has a 10% chance to proc, which is actually quite high. It procs a lot, which makes it kind of like a semi-reliable proc. These are the two major uses for this specific weapon oil. The first is for ret paladins. It's probably no surprise to you that paladins don't have the ability to slow enemies like rogues with crippling poison or warriors with hamstring. This makes paladins very susceptible to being kited by enemies in the battlefield. Applying frost oil onto your weapon as a paladin in PvP gives you kind of like a pseudo crippling poison in a sense, and it's really cheap to craft. So having frost oil applied onto your weapon during BGs is very attainable. The second use is in relation to raid progression during AQ40. The boss Visitus within that raid has a mechanic where he needs to be hit by a certain amount of frost spells within his first phase to trigger the frozen phase, where you need to shatter him in order to take his health down. This means mages spam rank 1 frost bolt, healers and Warlocks use frost damage wands, and rogues and warriors use this weapon right here, it's called Cold Rage Dagger, which drops off the last boss, the Lich boss in Razorfin Downs, Aminar the Coldbringer. On top of that, you can also apply frost oil to your weapon and expedite the process of triggering that shatter phase. Very useful. So these next ones will create consumables that are going to be useful throughout all content patches in World of Warcraft Classic. It's the protection potions, the elemental protection potions. You've got nature, fire, and frost, which are the really important ones. Now these aren't the greater protection potions, of course, but they're actually still quite useful, especially the nature one. The basic nature protection potion is really good. It absorbs pretty much close to 2,300 damage. These can be a great money maker, or if you're an alchemist and you just want to create them for yourselves, you might not want to always use the greater protection potion you just want to use a basic one because it's an easy raid night or on a boss that doesn't necessarily have major damage that needs a greater protection one then these can be quite useful and they also sell at a decent rate on the auction house so nothing really special here here's where you get them at these vendors there's no requirement or anything you literally just go purchase it and then you can craft it super simple let's move on so this is a potion that I actually mentioned in my last video, if you guys saw that one, it's actually the Greater Rage Potion. I compared it to Thistle Tea because it's quite similar, you just pop it and you gain 30 to 60 Rage. 
So in PvP, if you're lacking rage to kill the target, you just pop it, kill the target. In PvE, you just use it on cooldown to increase your DPS essentially and allow you to get more strikes out. Or during the execute phase to get an extra execute out. It's just an all around useful potion. I'm sure you guys can understand why on a warrior. And of course, as a tank, when you're pulling, you might be out of rage. Having a rage potion could basically save the day or save someone's life. This one's really easy to attain. Basically in a couple major cities, I'll post which ones over here in the maps on the screen, you can just walk up to these vendors, pick up the recipe, and then you're able to craft it. It's really simple and I definitely get it. You might be able to sell these or you might have a warrior friend who you can help out with these. Or if you're a warrior, you can make them for yourselves. So greater rage potions, these cities, go to the vendor, pick it up, good to go. Now another one that's really similar to that in the way that you attain it are actually the free action potions or better known as fat potions. Now these again are incredibly useful and these aren't specifically for warriors or melee these are for everyone there's uses for these in pve and in pvp in pve let's say on razor gore or a boss fight where he's going to do an aoe stun in a certain spot being able to pop a potion that makes you immune to stun is pretty much the best thing that you can have, I guess, in that scenario. So the potion itself actually makes you immune to stuns and also movement impairing effects for the next 30 seconds. So it's basically like a paladin freedom, but it lasts 30 seconds and also applies to stuns. This is a warrior's best friend, and it's very easy to attain the recipe. You pretty much just go to these major cities, same thing as the rage potion, pick it up, and then you can craft it. Arguably one of the best potions in the game and quite easy to attain, quite easy to make. So here's another simple one, but again, quite useful and sells on the auction house like absolute hotcakes. We've got the Elixir of Shadow Power, or the recipe for the Elixir of Shadow Power. So this recipe, like a lot of other ones on this list, is in limited supply, meaning you can only buy one off of the vendor, and after that one has been purchased, it actually disappears entirely. On some private servers, you'll actually still see it, you'll see it kind of grayed out, and then it'll pop back up. But on Classic WoW, what I've noticed is after that one supply is out, it disappears and then it comes back after the cooldown is done. So you get this recipe really simple from either Stormwind or Undercity at the Alchemy Trainer or the Alchemy Supplier near the Alchemy Trainer. So like I said, you're probably going to head there and notice that it's not available. You actually just have to wait. I, what I heard is it's about 85 minutes to 90 minutes for the respawn. So if you really want Elixir of Shadow Power, go there, camp for about an hour and a half and just wait for it to pop back up, buy it and you're good to go. If you have no patience for that, go to the auction house and probably somebody has it posted there. It's a really simple potion, it's used in raids by warlocks and shadow priests, just increases their shadow spell power. Okay, so this one is another lucrative one, but it's not a consumable. It's actually the pattern for living shoulders. So let's pop them up on the screen here. Look at the stats. Really, really nice for starter raid shoulders. 8 stamina, 13 spirit, and plus 31 bonus healing. These are pretty much the best entry level shoulders that you can get on a paladin, a shaman, and a druid. And in this content patch right now, everybody wants these. So it's a leatherworking pattern, but you have to be an elemental leatherworker. And once again, the vendor that actually sells this pattern only has a limited supply. So you'll have to wait the cooldown if they're not there. So these are really high quality shoulders and they're quite easy to make. It's only 12 rugged leather, four living essence and a rune thread. So there's two guys who sell this pattern. We've got Jangdor, Swift Rider and Fairless. That's the Horde one and then Pratt McGrubin in Fairless again, and that's the Alliance guy. So really simple, go to Fairless, pick up the pattern, make sure you're an elemental leather worker, and you're good to go, you're making the pre-raid BIS shoulders. So here's another limited leather working pattern, and this one I'm sure pretty much all of you guys know what it is, it's the Devil Sword Gauntlets. So the Devil Sword Leggings are actually a world drop to get that recipe, but the gloves are a lot easier to obtain. You pretty much just go to Ungoro, and there's a general goods vendor, his name is Nergal, and you buy it off of him. Again, it's limited, so you can only buy one, then you have to wait the cooldown, but still quite easy to attain. He's located near the Marshal's Refuge. And of course, you guys know that these are by far the best pre-raid melee gloves in the entire game, when combined with the leggings. So if you're wondering where to get this pattern, really simple, go to Ungoro, get them, and you're good to go. So that covers two leatherworking pre-raid items, although keep in mind that these require tribal leatherworking rather than elemental. Now this one is one that you can get at low levels, and everyone should get it if you're an engineer. You definitely know it because it's been a viable thing, or it's been a relevant thing throughout every single expansion. It's the Goblin Jumper Cables. So these are actually the lesser version of the Goblin Jumper Cables. It's not the Goblin Jumpers XL, but rather just the normal ones. You can actually make these at 165 engineering, so you can get them at level 20 easily, even earlier. You get them from these three vendors across low level zones. There's Zixil in Hillsbrad Foothills, Venix in Stone Talon Mountains, and bear with me on this one, Kazig, Kazix, Kazix in Duskwood. So again, really simple. 
it's limited supply like pretty much everything else on this list you walk up you pick it up and you're good to go you can now make goblin jumper cables and potentially save your group from a wipe although let's be honest they, they never actually work so here's another engineering tool and this is for the pvpers out there and also the people who hate fighting against mages so we've got the schematics for the gyro freeze ice reflector this is the trinket that when you actually use the on use effect will reflect frost spells back onto the enemy so you guys are probably already aware that there's a fire reflector a shadow reflector and a frost reflector the shadow and fire are actually drops that you get from doing instances but the ice reflector you pretty much just go buy it at a vendor you get in winter spring and everlook off the goblin zixer fizzbolt who's the engineering supplier so we'll mention this once again but it's actually only available in limited supply so you'll have to camp it or you'll have to get lucky and have it respawn by the time you get there so if you're a warrior struggling with frost mages this is an item that you definitely want to be getting the gyro freeze ice reflector or maybe the gyro freeze i don't know i'm greek so it's the euro freeze there we go the euro freeze ice reflector so winter spring is actually a hub for a bunch of good ones the next one is the rune cloth bag the pattern for the rune cloth bag for tailors this one is especially relevant right now because people are dying for bag space and people are doing so much leveling and mob grinding that they have tons of rune cloth available being able to craft a 14 slot bag right now can be super lucrative since people have bank alts they're leveling second characters and of course leveling their mains as well and stocking their own personal banks on their main character so this one's super simple but if you want to know exactly where the rune cloth bag is it's in winter spring off the vendor kia she's a goblin she's the trade goods supplier you go there ever look again it's limited supply but you pretty much go and if it's there you can get it now from the exact same vendor we have another one and it's actually an enchant formula for enchant chest major health this is the second most sought after chest enchant pretty much in the game the first one being plus six to all stats but a lot of the times especially pvpers will tend to lean towards the plus 100 hp enchant on their chest piece it's definitely something you should have as an enchanter you buy the formula from the exact same vendor kia in winter spring at everlook and once again, you guessed it, limited supply, there's only one, wait for the cooldown, hopefully you get it. So from Kia, we have the Rune Cloth Bag and Enchant Chest Major Health, which is 100 HP to your chest. Now this one is an absolute must get as a tailor. It's one of the most important patterns in the entire game, by a long shot. We all have bank alts, right boys? Now you can't get a job on Wall Street in the Trade District without looking the part, friends. And if you want to be the wolf of the Trade District, you need to get a tailored suit. Well, I know the perfect man. He's the most skilled tailor in all of Azeroth with the finest silks and the finest linens. He's worked with stars like Leroy Jenkins, C9 Sneaky, Oh, okay, fuck this gimmick. <laughs> yeah, so there's this dude in Ironforge named Outfitter Eric. He's basically the Dapper Dan of Ironforge. He's the guy that you go to see for the tuxedo patterns. And for Horde, it's a bit less exciting. I mean, look at this guy. Outfitter Eric is a beast. But in the Undercity, there's Millie Gregorian. She'll hook you up with the tuxedo patterns on Horde side. This pattern is again limited, so you can purchase one and then it goes on cooldown like pretty much everything else. Now, good luck getting stylish, friends. Okay, now this recipe, guys, is one of the most contested ones that there is. It's the formula for Ruined Arcanite Rod. It's the endgame enchanting rod that you need to perform most of the high-level enchants, or at least the top-end ones. So you can't just go to the trainer and then learn how to make this rod. You actually need to get the formula. Only one vendor in all of Azeroth actually sells this. It's Lorele Wintersong, the trade supplier in Moonglade, that Druid exclusive area. Now, a lot of people are leveling enchanting, or a lot of people are going to be leveling enchanting going forward. And if they want to get maxed out to 300, they need access to this rod. This one vendor is constantly camped with people trying to purchase it. And a lot of people just have their alt there and they're timing it and they're just going to get it and then try to sell it on the auction house for a premium markup. In my experience, this specific formula has been hard farmed and is extremely difficult to obtain. And it also has a really long cooldown. So once it's bought out and the supply is out, it takes a really long time to refresh. So nothing really special, just a rune arcanite rod. And if you need it, go get it, or at least go try to get it. Now this one guys is my favorite on the list by far and I'm sure a lot of you guys know how much I like this one considering I've spoken about it on this channel in maybe seven different videos. Pretty much every time I can talk about it, I do. It's the recipe for Dragon Breath Chili, the on-hit proc buff that breathes fire onto your enemies. It's a cooking recipe, so everyone can get it since you can train cooking on top of your base professions. It's also a decent moneymaker, not the best, but it's not too bad. 
while being relatively easily accessible. So in Desolus, there's this little robot that roams around. His name is Supercellar 680. He's in the south side and he'll hook you up with Dragon's Breath Chili. You could also get it from Helenia Olden out in Dustwallow Marsh, Ogmar, who's an ogre in Dustwallow Marsh, and Banalash or Bananalash in Swamp of Sorrows. So if you plan on running Dragon Breath Chili for yourself, I'd suggest getting the actual recipe and crafting it. Since you want to be stacked on a ton of them, the buff itself only lasts 10 minutes. So you really need to keep popping it if you want to keep it active throughout an entire raid or on every single boss fight. The mats are pretty easy to farm and you can get the recipe pretty easy and then you'll become self-sufficient in, in always having this buff applied to yourself. So here's another really important cooking recipe that's quite easy to obtain as well. This one is important for casters and healers, especially in later raid tiers where, like I mentioned earlier with the mana pots, fights become more intense and last longer. Mana sustainability is going to become way more important than it is in Molten Core where the fights are short and really easy. So the recipes are Sagefish Delight and Nightfin Soup two very important buffs. So after eating for 15 seconds for the well-fed food buff, you get a really nice raw MP5 buff. Pretty self-explanatory on this one, it's just basic mana regen. This stuff is super important, you want to be stacking as many MP5 buffs as possible, especially on a long fight like Four Horsemen, where there's a good amount of downtime during that 20 minute plus encounter. So during that downtime, your mana regen will actually go back to full, and stacking a bunch of these buffs on top of each other and a food buff can be great value. You get Sagefish Delight at any one of these vendors, it's pretty much all over the place, and for the top of the line food buff in Nightfin Soup, you get the recipe from Gikix the Fisherman in Tanaris. He's located at the Steam Weedle port east of Gadgetzen. Okay friends, that's today's video, 15 awesome crafting recipes available for sale at vendors across the globe of Azeroth, or I guess the flat earth of Azeroth if you think about it. This video should give you some useful information. I'm sure a bunch of these patterns and recipes are relevant to your vanilla goals. So get out there friends and go claim your goods. A lot of these recipes actually are extremely valuable and are going to be useful for the entirety of your classic experience. Some are going to make you gold and others are just awesome and corny or useful. Hopefully this video helped you out in your search for specific recipes and if you liked the video and want to see more like it, make sure to support my channel by leaving a like, commenting, subscribing, hitting the notification bell of course to be notified every single time I post a new video fresh out of the render oven. And that's it for me fellas, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.